The song you know, the story you don't. I can only imagine. You gotta admit, it's a pretty catchy song. Well, I Can Only Imagine is the latest film by the Irwin Brothers, the guys who brought us such faith-based films as Woodlawn, Mom's Night Out, October Baby, and it happens to release this week. I myself have had the tremendous honor of getting to see the movie, so I figured I might as well tell you guys all about it right now. I Can Only Imagine is a music industry biopic telling the story of the genesis of the 2001 Mercy Me smash hit of the same name. The film centers around the lead singer of the band, Bart Millard, and his very disturbing, very painful childhood. His dad was extremely abusive, his mother abandoned him and his dad when he was really young, and his football dreams were crushed due to an injury. I won't spoil any more about it, but he had a really tough childhood. So despite very little encouragement, in fact discouragement, from his family, he believes in himself so much and pursues pursues his dream of becoming, of course, a contemporary Christian recording artist. But sometimes you can't become who you want to be until you face who you really are. Now if you feel like that last line that I just said is a little bit cliche and cheesy, then I would say that's probably because it is. To a degree, we've kind of seen this story before with films like Walk the Line, Ray, Amadeus, kind of. Though this one definitely has its own unique flair. Though in my opinion, that isn't always to the film's benefit. You see, oftentimes in these rise to fame biopics, they focus on the band, the music, and the self-destructive tendencies of the troubled genius. This movie focuses more on the spiritual and emotional struggles of a man learning to forgive. And I wasn't entirely feeling it in the first part of this film. It was a little weird to me to see somebody whose big lofty dream was to become a contemporary Christian artist. It kind of felt like if I was like, you'll see dad, one day I'm gonna be a famous YouTube star and then you'll be sorry. It just doesn't quite have the same kick to it. You know, Christian singers aren't exactly rich and famous. But as the film progressed, I really found myself starting to get pulled into the story, especially on an emotional level. Now, I'm kind of a sucker for father-son storylines. I have a really great relationship with my dad, though that relationship hasn't always been perfect. It's not always been smooth sailing because we're very different people. It took a lot of tension and a lot of arguments and a lot of misunderstandings. And this movie, about halfway through, really starts to hit on that. And it got me right here. I was feeling a little emotional about it. So by the end of the film, I really feel like I started to appreciate it more as a family drama disguised as a music industry biopic. But maybe that's what this film needed to be? You know, you go in looking to learn about this song that you know, and you come out having learned about yourself. Of course, I love going and looking at what really happened, looking at the real story. And I found that there were some creative liberties taken. And that is not a criticism in and of itself. I mean, that's done all the time. You gotta make a good movie and sometimes some order of events are switched around in order to fit it all into the story. Sometimes characters are combined to make it all make sense. And a lot of that is just kind of in order to guide you emotionally and to get the gist of the story to fit somebody's whole life into an hour and a half, two hour film. Of course you have to take some liberties. But I'm kind of on the fence about how I feel sometimes about some of these Christian films. Whenever you say, hey, God did this, believe in him because this story's true, but then if things were changed and those particular things aren't true, you did it in the script. God didn't do it. Of course, they did release a book written by Bart Millard that also describes and explains the actual story and what's different from the movie than what happened in real life. So they're not being dishonest at all about it. It's just something to keep in mind and that you can decide for yourself how you feel about all of that when it comes to faith-based films. On the production side of it, it's great. It's fantastic. Like the Irwin brothers, they're true artists in filmmaking. I, I felt this way with Woodlawn. They're really good filmmakers. They have a great eye. It's really cool. The casting in the movie was fantastic. Well, except for the guy who plays Michael W. Smith, who's only in it for a little bit, but when he was on screen, everybody laughed because he doesn't look anything like Michael W. Smith. The guy who's playing Bart, he nails it. And from what I understand, he did all his own singing and he sounds just like Bart Millard from Mercy B. In fact, he sounds a little bit better, dare I say. In the end, I think this movie is very much like the song. It's highly emotional, it's passionate, it's well produced, but if you were to actually try to dig down into the content, it's probably a bit redundant and cliche, and very likely going to be overhyped by the more exuberant Christians in your life. But if you're a Mercy Me fan, you're gonna love this movie. Definitely is a love letter to late 90s, early 2000s contemporary Christian music. If you aren't a Mercy Me fan, then you, you might still enjoy it. I don't feel like it brings anything 
nothing super new to the table. I'm not gonna say that it's pretty good for a Christian movie because I hate whenever people use Christianity as an excuse to make a, a bad movie. But I will say, I think this is a great follow-up from Woodlawn. Not only do I think this is the Irwin Brothers best film yet, but I think they continue to raise the bar when it comes to faith-based films. Hey, did you see the movie? Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below.